Ambition is not spiritual. Selfish ambition is killing the church. Everybody wants to be something they ain't been called to be. Everybody wants to do what God ain't told them to do. Oh, quiet in here. I, I, I got to expose the devil, y'all. I'm tired of the devil. I'm, I'm tired of watching him in the world, and I sure ain't going to watch him in church, especially this church. If you can't come under authority, hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more. If you think you're going to run over authority, hit the road. Because there's authority in this house. And you ought to be glad because authority protects you. Authority no more than you know. Authority being where you ain't been. Lord, help me up in here. Authority got more responsibility. When Eve sinned, Eve sinned, not Adam. Eve broke the law. Adam loved her so much he did it too. He said, I can't lose my baby. And who did God come looking for? Adam! I gave you authority. I put you in charge. What's going on in your house? Ooh. Now, if Adam hadn't have done it, I don't know. God might have let Eve get by. She would have got by with lesser than what happened. Because authority protects you. Amen. Let me move on. Let me, let, me, hey, 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 let me get back to this unclean spirit. And Jesus rebuked him. You know what the word rebuke in English means to beat back. Jesus beat the devil back. Hey. You got to rebuke the devil. You can't play with the devil. Well, Mr. Devil, you go all over that side, and I stay on this side. And you stay upstairs, and I live downstairs. Devil, why we just can't all get along? God don't get along with the devil, y'all. And the devil ain't going to get along with you. You let him stay upstairs, he's going to take over downstairs. You let him ride shotgun, he's going to be driving pretty soon. All right, y'all hear what I'm talking about in here. Some of us are so afraid of conflict, we'd rather just say, try to make peace with the devil. The devil's the truth breaker. He don't know no peace. There's no peace to the enemies defeated. There's no peace to the enemies put down. He might shut up for a moment, but he's just looking for another chance. Jesus beat him in the wilderness, the Bible said, and he left him for what? All time. No, forever. Just for a little while. Let's see, just for a little while. He said, I'm coming back. Come on, come on. Ain't going to be no peace. Come on. He's going to keep trying you. He's going to keep trying you until he, he, he can find you at a weak moment. That's why the Bible said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Come on. We're like there ain't no devil to deal with. The Bible said we wrestle not with flesh and blood. We all know these scriptures, but, but we don't take them to heart. We, we wrestle with some powers, some principalities, spirits of wickedness in high places. Come on, glory to God. You in the battle, and you ain't going to win by not fighting. Anybody ever watch? I, I got in the habit now of watching UFC mixed martial arts. I used to didn't like it because they bleed too much. And I thought, I thought it was brutal. Until I start saying, that's the devil and that's me. Beat him up, Wesley. Beat him up. Beat him up. Beat him up. Beat him up. Come on. And you can tell when the fight is beat. For a little kick. Scared. That most Christians, we scared of the devil. And let me tell y'all something. Y I'm just going to hip y'all today. Everything in your life look natural ain't natural. When Jesus told the disciples to go to the other side of the lake and the storm came, you think that was natural? It looked natural, didn't it? Ooh, the storm. No, that was the devil that caused the storm. That was the devil that caused the storm, trying to get them to turn back. The devil caused the storms in your life. And it may look natural, but ain't nothing but the big head devil in your life. And you got to be able to discern the devil is at operation in this thing. I remember once I was, I was in uh, Michigan. And a couple helped me with something. I can't remember. It might have been financial. Soon they helped me, all hell broke loose on them. I said, like, God, oh, what's this? What? What's going on with them? 
Spirit said, it's the devil. It's like he said, it's the devil. I said, thank you, God, that's all I need to know. And I went to battle. I went to battle. And I put that devil down. Come on, y'all don't want to hear me in here. Some things look like, well, that's just the way it is, case of raw. No, that's the devil manipulating things in your life, trying to destroy you and steal your faith. Come on. And you got to know how to t attack that thing in the name of Jesus. Let me go on. Lord, help me. Jesus rebuked him saying, hold your peace. Shut up. That's what you tell the devil. Shut up. And in the Greek it says, Trey, be muzzled. You got to muzzle the devil like you muzzle a dog. Be muzzled. Shut your mouth. We let the devil woof at us too much. If you let the devil talk, he will intimidate you. He's an intimidator. He's trying to make you afraid. Trying to make you think, I'm going to take this. I'm going to do that. You can't handle me. And I'm going to feed you to the dogs. You're going bankrupt. You're going to lose your job. They're going to take your car. You got cancer. Your mama don't even like you. And your sister don't either. You might as well kill yourself. You ain't going to never get out. Anybody heard those voices? Come on, that ain't your mind. That's the devil talking to your mind. Now, I don't know how spirits manipulate the mind, but they manipulate the mind. They know how to manipulate your mind. And they're having you think that God don't even love you. You done committed the unpardonable sin. God will never forgive you. Anybody ever heard that one? Come on, people come to me, I've I, I, I sinned too much. God won't forgive me. How you know? Who told you that? Come on, tell the devil, shut your mouth. Quit letting the devil talk to you. Quit entertaining negative thoughts. Quit entertaining thoughts of defeat, thoughts of hate, thoughts of suspicion. Always got something negative going on. That's the devil. Some folks see a devil everywhere and everybody wrong except them. That's the devil. You ever run across some of them hateful kind of people? Everybody in church messed up but them. Everybody in the church alive except them. They're the only holy thing in the church. Everybody messed up. Pastor messed up. Everybody in the clique. Don't nobody like me in the church. Ain't none of them people say. Ain't none of them no good. <laughs> Turn around, hint them hypocrite tell. Well, if they're so hypocrite, what you sitting up in there for? Get your little sanctified self out. Ooh, that's a devil talking to you. Come on. Unclean spirits. Somebody say unclean. unclean. See, you think that's you thinking, but that ain't you. You don't think like that. Just think failure and negative all the time. That's the devil. Come on. And we all had those kind of bouts of depression. Who here ain't never been depressed? Don't you lift up your hand a lot? <laughs> Where do you think depression come from? Thank you. Do you hear his voice? No. You hear thoughts. Thoughts. Oh, everything woes a woes a woes a. I'm never going to get it together. I'm never going to get out of debt. I got, ain't nobody hiring. Ain't got no job. I don't know what I'm going to do. My brother won't help me. Mama don't even like me no more. She likes Susie, though. She always helping her, but she never helps me. <laughs> now you're angry at everybody in the family and everybody outside the family. Don't you know that's the devil? And the more you think negative, the more depressed you get. And the more you think negative, the more depressed you get. The more depressed you get, the more negative you get. It's just a cycle, a cycle, a downward cycle that takes you down, down. If you're not careful, if you don't get a hold of your mind, if you don't kick the devil out, if you don't tell the devil to shut his mouth, if you don't bind that devil and rebuke that devil and cast that unclean spirit out, you'll find yourself in the pit that you can't get out of. Now you run into the doctor trying to find a pill, and the pill take you into a deeper pit. Y'all don't like me in here. Oh, God. God help me, Holy Ghost. And this stuff is happening to preachers now. I've been talking to preachers, and, 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 and they've been fighting this battle. Going to get all kinds of pills, a pill to make them go to sleep and a pill to wake them up. Be like Michael Jackson, you won't wake up. Ooh. See, this is all because of unclean spirits. Let me tell you, unclean spirits have infested America like never before. America has become a hole for unclean spirits. You think Africa got unclean spirits? No, you, they over here now. You think China got them? No, they over here now. You thought they was in India? No, they over here now. Huh? We done imported all of it, y'all. 
We done put up their temples in every little city in America. You can find the Hindu temple. You can find Confucius temple. Come on, you can find the animist temple. You find all kind of worship places, satanic temple. They got satanic statues going up all across America now. We do, we do. I lived in Africa in almost 10 years. I encountered more demons and making than I did there in 10 years. And I ain't jiving. I am not jiving. You think they're in Africa. They're over here. And over here they hide. They're sophisticated. They hide in suits. They hide in stiletto shoes. They hide behind coach purses. Mm -hmm. They hide in choir robes and preacher robes. But they there. And we walking around like everything is peaches and creams. It's not, y'all. Go with me into Mark chapter 5. I just want to show you something. I, I want to wake you up. You wonder why you can't make it. Maybe you got some unclean spirits in your life that you need to deal with. Sometimes they get into your finances. They get into your husband. They get into your wife and to your kids. Come on. Sometimes they camp out in your bedroom at night. Ooh, and harass you and trouble you. And you don't even know what's going on. Come on, yeah, it's time to expose the devil, y'all. Mark 5 and 1 said, And they came over unto the other side of the sea, unto the country of the Gadarenes. Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man. Someone say a man. Amen. A man with an unclean spirit. A man met him, but the man had an unclean spirit. Some men got unclean spirits. And it's gender neutral. Some women do too. All you see is a man, but you better begin to discern what spirit they got. And what spirit is operating in them. You got to learn how to meet a person's spirit. Uh, don't get fascinated by their afro. They natural or they perm. What's coming out of them? Ooh. Oh, snappy. Some people got a snappy turtle spirit. They bite you, bite you, they bite you it's like a snapping turtle. Snapping turtle nothing to play with, boy. How many miss snappy folk? Just call them Snappy. Hey, Snappy. We here at WGNM would like to take a moment to say thank you for your continued support of the new Wineskins Fund. To date, we've been able to purchase three new high-definition cameras, tripods, cables, lights, connectors, computers, and a switcher that allows us to produce programs with a crisp, clean, professional look. We've used all of this gear to produce local ministry programs like Queen Esther's Connections, The Living Word, Traveling the Old Path, Let Freedom Ring, and Church Around the Corner. Because of your giving, the Word of God is going out to all of Middle Georgia and beyond. Don't forget, we're also able to bring you the pastor's heart and the open window. And this equipment has been crucial to our annual involvement in the National Day of Prayer. For all of this, we give praise to our Heavenly Father, and we give thanks to you. We still have a ways to go on our campaign. They're still multicasting, a new master control room, and our much larger Studio Joshua. We know that with your continued partnership, the rest of this will be done to advance the kingdom of God. To partner with us, please send a check or money order to WGNM 5962 Zebulon Road, Suite 364, Macon, Georgia 31210. Make sure you indicate new wineskins on your check or money order. Thanks, and may God bless. Get back to this man. And when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshiped him. The devils know who to worship, and we don't even know who to worship. The unclean spirit worshiped Jesus, and we come to church, and we don't even want to worship him. He cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of God, son of the most high God? 
I adjure, adjure me, I command thee by God that thou torment me not. He talking to God and going to command God by God. See, the devil don't care how he, how, uh, what he do. He going to use God's name and he ungodly. He unclean, but he going to command the son of God by God not to torment him. You know he, the devil crazy. He is a liar. And he, for he said to him, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Then he asked him, what is your name? Now, I don't know why Jesus asked him that. I don't ask demons their name. I don't talk to them. I tell them to come out and shut up. That's, my, that's how I play it. Shut up and come out. Because you might ask a demon, what's your name? He's going to say, your mama. <laughs> they ain't nothing but a lie. Right. How many is y'all? Too many for you. <laughs> I, I finna, they're they're going to tell you I ain't going to ask them nothing. Shut up and come out. But the master, he had it under control because he wanted to show us something. He answered, my name is Legion. For we are many. Do you know how many, do anybody even know what a legion is? A legion is a Roman army battalion consisting of 3,000 to 6,000 men. 3,000 to 6,000 men. This man had a legion of demons. I know you don't believe it. You, you read this, but you don't believe it's possible. He had so many demons, it was just like, whoa. But Jesus went there just to meet this and to show you how great he is. Amen. We got a great God. I said, we got a great God. We got a great God. If he'd have told you a legion, you'd have said, okay, y'all stay there, and I'll see you later. Amen. Come on. Uh-uh. I think I'd have got on my, I'd have got on my donkey and got out of town. Amen. Give me a horse. Give me any. I, I take a bicycle. I ain't gonna mess with this dude. Ooh, you know you wouldn't either. Some of us scared of one demon. Some of us even scared to say demon. Some of us even scared to say witchcraft. You better not say it. You don't get bad luck. Who is luck? You scared of a spirit. That's all it is. You scared of a spirit. And you need to leave this thing called karma alone. You don't know who karma is. Karma is a spirit. It's an Indian spirit. Who are you asking to do vengeance and blessing? I don't know no karma. I don't know one name, Jesus. Yeah, Lord. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, help me. Somebody say legion. Mm -hmm. Then he besought him. Some places said they bade, they bade him much that he would not send them away out of the country. See, the devil don't want to be cast out. He don't want to leave certain areas. He don't want to leave certain towns. He don't want to leave certain family. He don't want to leave certain places. Don't send us out of the country. I would have sent them to Russia. Y'all go to Russia. <laughs> Moscow in particular. And Kremlin is the pinpoint. They don't, see, they don't want, they like their familiar settings. They don't want to be made uncomfortable. Don't make me leave the church. Now, there was there nigh unto the mountain a great herd of swine feeding. And the devils, they begged him saying, send us unto the swine that we may enter into them. You can read it further. Jesus allowed them to go into the pigs. You know why he let them go into the pigs? For the Jews, the pig was an unclean animal. Why did he didn't say sinners into the sheep? Why did he didn't say sinners into the king? No, sinners into something unclean like us. See, when unclean get in you, it's going to make you unclean. That man that, that was living in the tomb didn't always live in the tomb. That man that was cutting himself, he was living like an animal. He was living a degraded life, an unclean existence. See, the devil wants to pull you down from where Jesus wants you to be. He wants to pull you into a low level. He wants to put you in a miserable condition. He wants to put you in a miserable life. He wants to make you do unclean things that are against God. The Bible tells us that about 2,000 pigs were, were over there. So we know there was at least 2,000 demons. And if, it, if there was a legion, it had to be at least 3,000. That's a lot of devils at one time. But how great is our God. Hallelujah. Ain't nothing too hard for Jesus. And the same Jesus is inside of you. 
So why do you think something too hard for God to turn around in your life? Why do we get scared when people talk about witchcraft and witch doctors and all that stuff? Because the fear is what empowers it. Fear is what empowers the devil. Fear gives the devil power. When you're afraid, I'm going to lose this. When you got faith, you ain't afraid of nothing. I said, when you got faith, you become a bad man. When you got faith, don't nothing make you afraid. When you got faith, the Red Sea don't make you afraid. When you got faith, legions don't make you afraid. Come on, when you got faith, sickness don't make you afraid. When you got faith, lack of money don't make you afraid. When you got faith, lack of degree don't make you afraid. There's nothing that makes you afraid because you know greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Come on, glory to God. You got to get to the place where you're not afraid anymore, where you're not afraid of the devil. You're not afraid of life. You're not afraid of what somebody's going to try to do to you because I know God is living on the inside of me because there's Christ in me is the hope of glory, y'all. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, we're looking at this scripture this week in Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or imagine by the power that works in us. Well, you know what? I dissected that, Doc, and I broke it down to this. God's power works in me. Come on. He said it's by the power that works in you. God said God's power works in me. That's what Jesus did. He would just use God's power. Come on. God's power works in me. Say it like you got an attitude. God's power works in me. Let me tell you about that power. It's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what you ask or even think. The power that works in you. It ain't going to work without you. It ain't going to work without you. It ain't going to work without you. Come on, glory to God. That's what's wrong in our church. We ain't doing nothing. We let the devil come in and take over the churches. Homosexual pastors and homosexual deacons and first ladies. We got drunks and alcoholics, drug dealers on the boards in our churches. I know I'm telling the truth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Tobacco smoking. Tobacco is unclean. Alcohol, unclean. We got these folk running our churches. Y'all don't want to hear me. Adulterating, fornicating people running the house of God. Come on, go. that's unclean in the sight of God. You're letting the devil set up shop. You're letting the devil have headquarters in the church. My God, we're abusing ourselves with drugs and alcohol, abusing our wives, abusing our children. That's an unclean spirit. When a man don't treat his wife with love and care, when a man don't protect his wife and treat his wife, you got an unclean spirit. You don't need no wife. You go out there and grab one of those things off the corner. You don't need no wife. Don't know how to treat a wife. Oh, uh, y'all don't like me. And women treat your husband with respect. You don't need a husband if you can't respect him. He don't want to be kissy kissy all the time. He won't respect. Come on, respect the man. Honor the man. Make the man feel good, even when he mess up. Make the man feel good, even when he doubt him. You ain't no leader. You don't know how to lead us, right? Baby, you, you, uh, you're a great leader. I appreciate your leadership. I appreciate what you're trying to do. I remember once in Africa, when, after three months, they stopped giving us money, and me and my wife decided to stay. We burnt our tickets. We was walking in faith, but one time the devil hit me hard in that first few months. Ooh, Lord. I said, I don't know, baby. We might need to go back. She said, we ain't going nowhere. <laughs> she said, we ain't going nowhere. We stand here. God going to do it. God going to take care of us. You, and, and next thing you know, my faith came back. Woo, thank you for a wife. Amen. Come on, come on. Who didn't beat me down. She could have said, you got me over here, and we ain't got no money all the way over here in Africa. Is you crazy, fool? I'm going home. No, we're going to make it. God going to help us. We ain't going back nowhere. Amen. Because sometimes as a leader, you're thinking about her. I, I'm putting too much on her. She let me know, uh -uh. God is my God. Amen. Nine years later, almost 10 years later, come on, driving Mercedes, BM, BMW, living in half a million, $700,000 houses, on TV, traveling all the countries over there. God is a faithful God. You just got to get rid of those unclean spirits. Glory to God. See, the devil always trying to intimidate you. Always trying to intimidate you and make you afraid. I ain't afraid of no big head devil. The hell with the devil. 
and everybody who worked for him. Amen. You, if you, you let the devil hang around. If you don't get an attitude with the devil, he's going to hang around. If you don't believe you can cast him out, he ain't going nowhere. Remember one time in South Africa, prayed for a guy, he hit the ground. Next thing I know, the devil picked him up. Why I say the devil picked him up? He didn't bend an arm, he didn't bend a leg or a knee. Something picked him up like he was a puppet on string and set him on his feet. I said, come out of him. No! He's mine. I said, he ain't no more. I said, come out. That demon came out that fast. Boy, hit the ground like a wet rag. Right. See, the devil going to bluff you. He going to see if you really got faith. He going to see if you really believe. See, that, that move was to intimidate me. I seen people's face shift. I'm looking at a lady, and her face shifted into an alien right in front of my eye. And I did like a little puppy. I ain't lying. She looked like something off, off, off a sci-fi movie. I looked at her. I said, come out. You better let the devil know you know you the boss. You better let the devil know you know because you got authority. I said, you better let the devil know because if you don't, he ain't going nowhere. He'll go get some more stronger than him and come back at you. I'm going to hey, glory to God. I said glory to God. Come on, Jesus took charge over this thing. And, and you know, you can read the story on your own, but after Jesus cast the, the devil out, the people come back and see the man clothed in his right mind. Then Now they're afraid. Hold on. The man was breaking chains, cutting himself, living with, in the tomb they weren't afraid. Now the man got clothes on in his right mind. Now they're scared. We're so used to devil when it's right, we don't even know what to do about it. Cause we're so used to the devil whooping us, got everything upside down, got our churches in turmoil, got our churches unclean. There's no healing in our churches, no deliverance in our churches, no Holy Ghost in our churches because we got a church full of devils and demons bumping and grinding in the church. And we don't see nothing wrong with it. Preaches a five-minute sermon out of the Encyclopedia Britannica, out of Alice in Wonderland, and then we happy. A man of God come and open the Bible, give you wisdom, understanding, and deep revelation, and now we're afraid.